under your belt definitely will try to hide away shy away from the matter and the only strategy is as lawyers that you try to build the matter and solve the matter and rest assured and just be rest assured i want hmm. we just try and see if we can get vishnu shankar jain back but uh, uh, even as he was speaking, like I said, he was on the move, ladies and gentlemen, as he connected with us. Yes, he's back. Yes, Vishnu, we lost you there momentarily. Please complete. So I was saying that uh, definitely there is a uh, strategy to prolong the battle, but we will definitely keep fighting the legal battle on all the forums before the district court, before the Allahabad High Court, and before the Supreme Court, and will write and will try to fetch justice for uh, for the, mm. all the worshippers. So now, 21st, you are, if I remember the date correctly, you are scheduled yes. to uh, present yourself at the Allahabad High Court. Allahabad now, Allahabad since, the, since, since, since the court has said that you need to draw up a, uh, an, an appropriate uh, request with the district judge, so when are you going to do that? Will that happen early next week within, of combining within, all the petitions, all the suits? Within, yeah, within, few, uh, within a few weeks it will happen. Definitely, we'll uh, make an application before the district judge. To tell a time frame today, uh, it will be a little difficult, but after... Uh, making all the formalities, we make an application before the district judge. But before that, this entire challenge bit of whether it's a shivling or whether it's the base of a fountain, that has to be yes. sorted by a third party, which will be a scientific investigation. So are you yes, confident of, of, of a favorable verdict there? Because that's with the Allahabad High Court. Two matters, like you mentioned. Yes, that's, that's ma that matter is pending before the Allahabad High Court. The Allahabad High Court has sought reply from the SI. And definitely right. I'm confident. Because uh, it's very logical that if one party Jee. is saying it's a shivling, other party is saying it's a fountain, the only mode of ascertaining is by an expert body like an SI or a scientific Jee. investigation. So I am definitely hopeful that this uh, this uh, argument will find favor with the Honorable Allahabad High Court and rest, well. let's see what happens in the future. Thank you. Thank you for your time, Vishnu Jain. Thank you for speaking with us. With that, we call it a wrap on this edition of The Nation at Five. Viewpoint, up next with Zakar. Stay with us. The standoff between the Kerala government and Governor Arif Mohammad Khan is getting sharper, it's getting shriller with each passing day. Now, the Pinara Vijayan-led government has moved an ordinance to remove the governor as chancellor of one of the universities in the state, the Kala Mandala. And now the indication from the state government is that the governor could be removed as chancellor from more universities across the state. The governor, on the other hand, he contends that this was the state government which did not follow due process and that he cannot be removed as chancellor. After all, this is a tradition that has been there from British times. It's not just a tradition that's been there since India became an independent country 70 years ago. But from British times, it was always governors who were appointed as chancellors of universities. That is his contention. This is clearly a political face-off between the governor and the state government. And the question is, who is going to blink first in this face-off? And who is it exactly here? Is it the governor or the state that is crossing the Lakshman Rekha? Alright, so full panel joining us this evening to talk about this very, very deeply contentious and political issue. Uh, John Britas is Member of Parliament of the Rajya Sabha from the CPIM. He's joining us on the talking point this evening. KJ Alphonse is former Union Minister and Senior Leader of the BJP. Raju P. Nair is a leader of the Congress Party. He'll be joining us in a moment. And Kalishwaram Raj is a lawyer with the Supreme Court. Uh, let me start with you, John Britas. Uh, first things first, what the Governor is contention is that due process was not followed while naming these chancellors of universities. Uh, he says that the due process is that three names have to be forwarded by the state for every vice chancellor's position and it's up to the governor to choose from those three names. He says this process was not followed. Your response. Saka, who appointed these vice chancellors? 
The appointment was done by none other than the Chancellor, that is Mr. Arif Mahukalan, the Governor of Kerala. Now, there is an issue. Should the UGC regulation prevail or the original statute which constituted this university? So there was a court confusion with regard to it. Supreme Court, rightly or wrongly, said that UGC regulation will prevail over that. That is the status of that case. Anyway, the state of Kerala would be going for a review petition in Supreme Court. Now, now the issue is very simple. The issue is that the governor wants to sabotage the mandate of the people. There is a method in this madness. If we cannot destabilize an opposition-led government, then disrupt it and defame it. So, Mr. Arif Mundakan is bent upon to do the task for the ruling party, that is BJP. Earlier, governorships were something of a retirement perk or a rehabilitation or a reward for unstinted loyalty. Now it is for a hitman's job. I mean, you are appointing somebody as a hitman to sabotage the mandate of the people. The constitutional scheme of things, what is the constitutional morality? Those are ordered to power, they would govern the people. The governor wants to tweak that and sabotage that. That is the issue now. Now, okay. as regards the Kalamandalam case, that's a deemed university, and uh, the executive authority, that is uh, the Kerala government, can appoint the chancellor. So there is no lacuna in that. And with regard to the chancellorship, it is not part of the constitutional duty of a governor. Mm -hmm. That has been bestowed on the governor by the Kerala Assembly. Many states, including uh, Gujarat, I understand, uh, governors are not the chancellors of the university. It is a prerogative of the respective uh, state uh, assemblies. So the state assembly, in its wisdom, can decide that the governor need not be the chancellor. Simple as that. Okay. We are f following the rule of the law and the constitution. The only issue here is that there is a resounding consensus in the country from 1969 onwards Several commissions, including Sarkaria Commission, Punchi Commission, and the NDA appointed National Committee on the Working of the Indian Constitution, they all said that the governor needs to function as per the aid and advice of the union, uh, I mean the ministry. Yeah. That was the sum and substance of the several verdicts from the constitutional benches of the Supreme Court also. Okay. Now here is a gentleman who wants to sabotage the system and also to throttle the democracy. That is the issue. And this is not a clash between the uh, Kerala government and the governor. This is a uh, unilateral onslaught on the constitution. So the okay. issue is constitution and governor. So let, let, let me ask uh, KJ Alphonse that uh, what John Britas is also saying and what the contention of the state government is, that the governor has gone far beyond, this is not just an issue of vice chancellors or chancellorships, this has now become, uh, become an issue of sabotage. Uh, as Mr. Britta said, uh, he called uh, the governor do performing a hitman's role. Is this uh, the way of the governors appointed by the NDA government? Because we're seeing this not just in Kerala. We're seeing this in Tamil Nadu, where again there's a standoff between the governor and the state. We're seeing this in Telangana as well. Is this governors being used to undermine opposition rule states? That's the contention from the CPIM and from uh, John Britta's. Mr. Alphonse. Saka, it's uh, extremely unfortunate what is happening in Kerala. The governor is performing his constitutional duty. Well, if the CPM doesn't like the constitution, which was uh, uh, authored by as distinguished a person as Dr. Ambekar, let them move the parliament. John Bertas himself is a member of parliament. Let them move the parliament for changing the constitution of India. As you said, initially itself, it's been the tradition, time-honored tradition, that the governor is a chancellor of universities from the British days onwards. For the past many, many months, many years, we see that the CPM does not want the universities to function autonomously. In fact, I was principal secretary of higher education in Kerala. I was on the syndicate of all these universities and I've seen how communist syndicate members function. The governor has pointed out innumerable number of cases where the relatives of uh, ministers and uh, senior members of the party have been appointed to the universities in teaching jobs, to administrative jobs. 
vice chancellors have been appointed who are maybe technically qualified, but otherwise the due process of law has not been followed. John Butas was right when he said initially the Supreme Court has said that the due process of law must be followed. Now, the first part of what John Butas said was right, but then second part he goes completely wrong. He says the governor is trying to sabotage constitution, but this is exactly where John Butas and the entire communist infrastructure is going wrong. He is upholding the constitution on the 21st of October this year, last month. The Supreme Court has said, you may be qualified, but if the due process of law has not been followed, you cannot be appointed. So the Vice Chancellor of Kerala Technological University has been removed. Mm -hmm. Based on that judgment, the governor has issued notice to 11 Vice Chancellors of Universities in Kerala saying, your appointment was not as per what is laid down, as per the regulations which is laid down by the UGC. And the Supreme Court is also very, very clear. John Butas, there is no doubt on this. The Supreme Court has said, even if in your university legislation, this has not been included, if the UGC legislation says that this is a due process of law, mm -hmm. the state universities must, the government state universities must adopt that regulation. So it's very, very clear. There is no confusion. Okay. So the governor, instead of sabotaging, sabotaging the procedures process, he has been upholding the constitution, especially in the light of the latest judgment of the Supreme Court. So now okay. over the past few months, or maybe a couple of years, we <coughs> see the, the state government, the communist government, not allowing the government to function, the governor to function at all, every move. In fact, there was an attempt to physically manhandle him and it happened. And then of course, I don't know whether the governor can even travel in Kerala safely anymore. It has reached that kind of a stage. It's extremely unfortunate. All right. CPM, the communists who speak very loud about the Constitution of India, upholding the constitutional values, I think first begin with the state of Kerala. In the state of Kerala, please uphold the Constitution. So, let me ask Raju P. Nair of the Congress Party. Um, uh, KJ Alphonse has a point where this whole thing started with the Supreme Court striking down on the appointment of the Vice Chancellor appointed to the Technical University uh, and then the Governor used that as a precedent saying that if the Supreme Court has struck it down then the remaining appointments too are questionable because of flouting of due process. Uh, if that is the starting point of this whole fracas between the Governor and the State Government then uh, what is the position of the Congress Party? Yeah, see, uh, the position of the Congress Party, as you said, the BJP government is trying to uh, sabotage the, the, the uh, you know the other political parties, governments in every state using the governor and the, his machinery. There is no doubt about that, and we fully uh, the Congress Party has a stated position against this kind of uh, unconstitutional methods to sabotage the uh, uh, you know the other governments. But when it comes to the chancellor, the, the governor's capacity as chancellor, as you said, it did not start from the Technical University Supreme Court judgment. It started much before in Kerala because it was the Congress who had raised the objection that uh, the, the many appointments at the universities, including Kannur University, where it is the home district of the CM Pinarayi Vijayan, uh, his, his person was appointed as the Chancellor of Vice Chancellor of Kannur University. And uh, that appointment was not as per the norms that we had raised it many times in the assembly also. Now, when this appointment happened, the governor and government were partners in crimes. The governor later, after all these issues, had come out and said that it was under the pressure from the CM that I had appointed Mr. Gobinathan as the Kannur VC. And I now regret. And after regretting and after he uh, uh, accepting that it was uh, 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 an appointment, against the rules he did not expel him from the post okay but there were many instances where the government and governor were hand in hand in such appointments and they had a mutually uh, mutual agreement on, on all these issues now once the, uh, the the agreement broke and these two people the, the governor and the government started uh, fighting i don't uh, fully agree to that fight but anyways when these issues happen it is that at that time that the, uh, the technical university judgment from the supreme court came correct and the technical university judgment makes it very clear that any appointment which is not as per the ugc regulations because that was a contention for kind of a point of contention in earlier uh, judgments now that was cleared and it was the supreme court very clearly said that the ugc regulation will prevail 
and after that the technical university vice chancellor was ousted now what happened is the and this uh, judgment applies to all other appointments in the in the in, in the entire country in the in universities in the entire country mm -hmm. a accordingly these other appointments which were not held as per the norms obviously okay. will be challenged in the court and the governor might have felt then tomorrow it is if it is challenged in the court i will have to be there answering to that uh, okay. uh, in the, I, that I will court. Uh, i will because go to kaleshwaram raj uh, to get a constitutional position but i want john britas to first uh, respond to this charge because i think again this whole thing flared up because the wife of the political secretary to the chief minister got appointed in a position uh, in the kannur university and that's where this whole thing triggered the bjp and the congress both are saying well she may be qualified but this is a case of nepotism john ritas charge the appointment of the wife of the political secretary to the private secretary to the cm that's an individual case that is now uh, Uh, under the consideration of the high court and it's a subjudice matter anyway whether she is qualified or not the high court is going to decide about it let me just come to the uh, argument of uh, my dear friend alphonse uh, he was an mla in kerala he was also a higher education secretary he never uttered these things when he was uh, upholding his uh, uh, responsibility here anyway nevertheless now he has a political role to play and uh, i fully appreciate that he has to do that see the supreme court judgment that is under article 254 that is repugnancy suppose there is a state law which is in conflict with the central law the central law will prevail we have a legal case now the question is that a university has been formed by an assembly uh, law i mean a law passed by the assembly so a ugc regulation not the original ugc act a ugc regulation can that supersede the original statute or law passed by the assembly that's a question and again it's not that there was not a panel the thing is that there were three names since the search panel the members each of them gave the same na name that was issue issue there mm -hmm. it's not that you see somebody from outside the purview of the uh, list was brought in and uh, made the vice chancellor in that case uh, alphonse kandanana would have to i mean explain how the vc of a central university has been appointed there was a 15 member uh, uh, i mean committee the search committee had identified 15 names but the uh, education department in delhi appointed the vc of the central university in kerala from outside this 15 members that that is the That, that that is the credit of alphonse kandanara when they talk about kerala's vice chancellors now as regards the threat to the uh, uh, governor see the governor of kerala has been calling and depicting a person uh, of uh, the stature of dr irfan habib as a gunda i think alphonse has to come out and condemn the so called uh, mean statements made by the governor now coming coming to the universities there are 11 12 universities which the governor says that the supreme court where it is going to be applied yeah. see there are 500 universities if you go about the ugc regulation would have been flouted in at least 300 universities across the nation can uh, there could be i mean change of governors there now i am very glad that you see alphonse kandanana wants the british era norms here that means during the british period the governor used to be the chancellor alphonse ji you are for atma nirbhar you want the british norms there were governors during the mughal era 1935 government of india act there was a governor who was by the raj for the raj of the raj do you want a governor of that kind here now now see a chancellorship is something bestowed on the governor is not part of his constitutional obligation okay. or duty it is given by the assembly that means the kerala government or uh, andhra government or tamil nadu government why is it that the so called british era norm of chancellorship which my friend alphonse kannadana wants to uphold is okay. not applicable, applicable uh, in his model state gujarat uh, I... why is not insisting that all the uh, chancellors in uh, Uh, Gujarat should be governor. Okay. Why is not doing that? Uh, I'll get I'll get Alphonse uh, to respond to it. G See, the only issue here yeah. is that. Hmm. 
I'll, I'll get KJ Alphonse to respond to it, but Kalishwaram Raj has been waiting very patiently, uh, Supreme Court lawyer. They want uh, to up it. The closest, the, issue the closest governor versus government fight that we've seen in recent times was uh, between Mamta Banerjee and Mr. Dhankar, when Mr. Dhankar used to be the governor of uh, West Bengal. And there too, a similar move had been made by the Bengal government to bring a bill to remove the governor as chancellor of uh, the various universities uh, in the state. Are state governments, state assemblies in this case, within their powers to do that? And if they do that, if, if in the case of Kerala, the state does bring an ordinance or a bill to remove the governor as, as the chancellor of uh, universities, what sort of precedent, constitutionally speaking, would that set? Kalishwaram Raj. Yes, the, as it has already been indicated in this discourse, the power which the governor is exercising is essentially a statutory power as regarding the universities. It is not the constitutional power. Therefore, what is given by the statute, what is given by the legislative assembly to the governor can also be taken back by the same assembly. The giver of the power can also be, uh, will also be empowered to take it back. There is absolutely nothing unconstitutional about it. Mm. That is the prerogative of the legislature. And that is what democracy is all about. And that is why what has been done in Bengal is absolutely correct. And now, coming to the Kerala issue, I think there are at least three points to be noted. Number one, the government has already expressed its willingness to take back the power and to unseat the governor from the position of the chancellor. Yes. The government having done that, then it's a question of propriety also and bona fide also on the part of the governor, governor to apply a judgment in another case to all other persons who are not even parties to that particular case. That is the second point. The judgment cited by the governor is not an inter-party judgment as far as the remaining vice chancellors are concerned. They were not heard in that matter. Mm -hmm. They can therefore genuinely raise a contention that you only appointed us and what are all the mechanisms which you followed are not known to us. This comes to the third point. This takes us to the third point. Okay. The third point is that these vice chancellors can say that it was an indoor it is it was a case of indoor management where the appointing authority namely the chancellor chose to have the forums appointed us and now he cannot turn back and say that the appointment is void of issue okay. so these are contentions which were not germane in the case which is decided by the supreme court mm -hmm. but nevertheless are, are available for the remaining vice chancellors to raise. To contend. Okay, let, let, me, let me get uh, uh, KJ Alphonse to respond to the point that Britas made earlier about uh, this is a British era tradition. Uh, your government is ostensibly for Atma Nirbhar. Why do you want to continue this legacy, this colonial era legacy of having governors as chancellors of universities and states? Asaka, first of all, he made a personal allegation. What was I doing in the syndicate of these universities when I was principal secretary of higher education? In every syndicate meeting, the communist syndicate members used to gang up and try to do illegal things. And in every meeting used to be a kind of battleground for me in which I used to stand up alone because all these Congress syndicate members as well as the communists used to join together for, personal, for reasons which are I don't want to explain here. And they would come up with completely crazy things. This is exactly what is happening. So the whole issue of this governor and the government com confrontation is regarding the purity of education in Kerala because I see completely irrational things, completely partisan decisions being taken. Let me come to uh, appointments. I don't want to name John Britas, the number of people, your politically senior people, ministers, wives and their in-laws who have been appointed. I can, I can mention to you a dozen cases. So it's not an isolated case. See, take the appointment of uh, the Vice Chancellor of Gandhi University. The candidates were shortlisted. They were called to Trivanda for the interaction. And the Chief Secretary was chairing, was the chairman of the search committee. 
the day before the interview the person got a message on her phone saying that the interview has been postponed you know what happens the very next day the very next day without interviewing this candidate or the other candidates the search committee submitted the reports based on on prodding from the government from the from the government mm -hmm. is this a transparent process john mr john butas you search the records and see what i if i'm saying is right you take decisions which are completely partisan the latest of which is of course intermandan cooperation mayor has written to the cpm districts secretary saying please give me the list of people to be appointed party people to be appointed yeah. So what is happening in Kerala is just distribution of the spoils of government among its own people, which is completely unconstitutional. I don't agree with Advocate Kalishwar Raj as well. The principle laid down in this case that if the due process of law is not followed, the entire the entire appointment stands cancelled ab initio, or therefore. that principle would apply not only to this particular case of technological university mm -hmm. it would apply to all cases yes if you have to reopen 300 cases reopen because the due process of law is extremely important and that is what is laid down in the constitution right. as sacrosanct you have to follow that what we see sakai in kerala is a complete destruction of the education system in kerala the relatives of party people being appointed teachers being appointed the teachers unions dictating the syndicate members who are party men are okay. dictating things and therefore uh, kerala which was a leader in in literacy in fact i was a district collector of kottayam when kottayam was declared as a first literate town kottayam was uh, kottayam was declared as the first literate town in india i feel extremely sad it must be a state which leads in higher education which really is number 1 in the country in higher education in terms right. of ranking producing children with creativity and all that happens in kerala universities and colleges is politicking this okay. has to end i got to completely wrap up uh, but john ritas 30 seconds i, I got to completely wrap up completely out of time 30 seconds yeah but saka i am amused because uh, he was so fed up with uh, the communists that's why he contested election as a Uh, a a communist-supported uh, candidate for the assembly, so that sums up everything. Now, as regards the VCs in Kerala, I would say that they have got impeccable academic records. The gentleman he referred to, that is M G University, Professor Sabu, or Gobinath Ravindran of Kannur University, he was the I C H R member secretary. And think about the uh, ratings and rankings of the Kerala University. The NAC ranking Kerala University has got. Double A plus. Now the only issue is that can you allow a governor to be a bull in the China shop? Okay. Can he be permitted to sabotage the constitutional scheme of things? That is the only issue here. Right. As I said, the central government wants to use them as hitmen. Nothing more, nothing less. Okay. I want to leave it at that. Thank you very much, uh, John Britas, KJ Alphonse, Rajiv Nair, and of course Kali Shuram Raj for joining us. This is not going to end any time soon. Uh, and mind you, it's not going to end just with Kerala alone. I suspect. uh this might play itself out in other states as well uh governor versus state governments in opposition rule states i want to move on to a piece of breaking news that's coming in rajendra pal gautam the former aam aadmi party minister who quit after a uh, row over a conversion ceremony where he presided over a conversion ceremony where many hindus converted to buddhism he has now been made a star campaigner by the aam aadmi party for the upcoming mcd elections the bjp has criticized the aap for giving a platform to anti hindu individuals let me go across to akash who has more details on this uh, any explanation any reasoning coming from uh, uh, the aam aadmi party as to why a minister who was sacked just a few weeks ago uh, is is on the list of the star campaigners not yet zaka but you see aap has put out this uh, particular list and rajendra pal gautam is one among the 30 star campaigners now we know that how he was center of attraction in the mass uh, conversion controversy in delhi in fact you know there are claims that this was the only reason why he had to resign from his a uh, ministerial post but as of now uh, you know he is one of the star campaigners and bjp is somewhere attacking aam aadmi party saying uh, that you know aam aadmi party is an anti anti hindu party because you know we have seen the developments where there were claims that rajendra pal gautam was not only the part of that particular program in fact he was the very part of those votes that were taken in that program and at this point in time you know 
uh, ahead of MCD polls, this is going to be a matter of political slugfest because BJP has started attacking Amadi party and saying that they play a politics of convenience because in Gujarat they are convincing that they are you know pro Hindu party and now uh, while Rajendra Gautam is one among the star campaigners, so it is somewhere showing the real face of Amadi party. All right, Akash, we'll leave it at that. We'll see how the story plays ahead of the MCD elections between the AAP and the BJP. Meanwhile, more political news and Prime Minister Modi was in Bengaluru today to inaugurate a swanky new airport terminal and the Congress wasting no time in targeting the BJP. In fact, Karnataka Congress President D.K. Shivkumar, former Chief Minister Sidharamaya, both writing a joint letter to the Prime Minister alleging that there is rampant corruption in the state of Karnataka. They claim that 90% of poll promises remain unfulfilled, but the Prime Minister is only patting CM Baswaraj Bomai on the back and not addressing critical issues like inflation, unemployment and declining GDP. Uh, Harish is joining us live. Uh, Harish, so this has now become full-fledged political between the BJP and the Congress. Uh, in the face of this swanky new airport terminal and the Vande Bharat uh, trains that were inaugurated, does this charge of uh, faulty infrastructure still lie, uh, a, a, at least in the political realm? It does, and uh, that is for two reasons. One, if you look at the infrastructure that's there in Bangalore, especially the ones that get used on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, especially roads of Bengaluru, they are still uh, in, in a bad shape. Uh, citizens saying that, uh, in fact, over the, on Twitter over the last day or so, we've had uh, several of these accounts going out and mocking the government, mocking the BBMP, saying that now that you're only asphalting roads where the Prime Minister is travelling, we should perhaps invite the Prime Minister to travel in our area as well. He should visit Bengaluru more often. So that in a way indicates that despite a swanky new terminal for the Bengaluru uh, International Airport and the Mande Bharat connecting Mysuru and Chennai to Bengaluru, you still have citizens who believe that infrastructure that they, de that they use on a day-to-day -day basis is still not up to the mark. It's still making their life miserable. Also, let's not lose out on the larger political point here. The Congress is trying to corner this government because they feel that there is an aggressive pitch from the BJP to corner the Vokaliga vote in the name of uh, unveiling a statue of Nada Prabhu Kempe Gauda. Also, we have seen a 45-day yatra in the run-up to this unveiling of the statue where all of their Vokaliga ministers hit the streets and they said they would collect the holy soil. It's being seen as an outreach by the government to ensure that uh, Vokaligas in the state get to know that this government also wants to woo them. So a lot of politics also behind it, but the right. Congress saying that when the state government hasn't completed its project, uh, the uh, Prime Minister who's coming to Bengaluru has a lot to answer. All right, we'll leave it at that. Uh, Harish, many thanks for joining us. Uh, that's a wrap. Rhythm are joining you in a moment with the biggest exclusive. Good evening. Thanks a lot for staying with us here at CNN News 18. I'm Rutama Bhatnagar. In a big setback to the NCP today, the Mumbai police arrested NCP's leader Jitendra Awad. This after he remember had stormed the screening of the film Harar Mahadev and also roughed up a few viewers. Let me give you a quick background. Now the film tells the story of Baji Prabhu Deshpande, commander of Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj's forces who founded the Maratha Empire in the mid 17th century. On Monday, the film screening in Thane Mall was stopped by this NCP leader. This after he claimed that the film distorts the Maratha history. The NCP today has called the arrest as vendetta politics, with NCP workers staging a massive protest in Thane in Mumbai. Even as the leader remains defiant, the BJP is asking, can hooliganism be defended?
So let me now first talk to you about what the film Har Har Mahadev is and what are the objections as far as the NCP is concerned. Now this film Har Har Mahadev is a Marathi historical action drama where the story essentially is about Shivaji's small army under General Baji Prabhu stands to powerful in Ajpuris. Let me now quickly talk to you about what are the objections as far as the NCP is concerned and why really are we seeing this political war of words. Now first the NCP feels that the story of Shivaji Maharaj has been distorted and they've given some examples let me quote you those examples they feel that mavlas which are essentially foot soldiers have been wrongly depicted the ncp also has a problem with one particular scene which is problematic because it says that it shows baji prabhu wield a sword against shivaji which the ncp says is wrong now who is baji prabhu he was a commander of shivaji and baji prabhu is linked with an important rear gag battle enabling shivaji's escape from the panhala fort there are many other issues that are being quoted by the ncp the other issue is how marathas and marathis are shown as two different entities the ncp is also saying that cinematic liberties on sensitive issues is unacceptable so the larger question that we are asking is is hooliganism can it be really defended Before I get to the political spokespersons from the NCP and the BJP I actually want to begin the conversation with political analyst Varun Singh who's joining us Varun good to have you on the broadcast with us how do you see what has happened over the last one week which has now resulted in this arrest Thank you Radhima see the movie has been released it has been there in the theaters for almost 10 days and uh, I don't know all of a sudden what was the issue that Mr Avar and his party all of a sudden has with this movie because it was in theaters as if as an it wasn't that it was released on day 1 and they went and started the protest secondly uh, earlier on your channel when adi purush was being discussed i remember telling that if the sen- censor board has approved a film then it shouldn't be stalled in any way it should be screened and in this case if mr avar who already has a 365 ipc case against him for you know allegedly kidnapping a man engineer from thane getting to him to his bungalow and you know beating him up along with his police guard and now this man along with his karyakartas have gone to a hall and not just abuse but you know if you see the video it is clearly visible that his karyakartas got offended on the word of a common man asking who कोई भी आके पिक्चर रोक देगा क्या ऑन कोई भी ऑन दिस पर्टिकुलर वर्ड इज द ईगो ऑफ अ पॉलिटिशियन सो दैट सो ह्यूज दैट हिज कार्यकर्ताज हैव टू असॉल्ट एंड ही वाज प्रेजेंट ओवर देयर दिस इज नॉट अ फर्स्ट केस दैट मिस्टर आवार इज फेसिंग ही वाज अ मिनिस्टर व्हेन सेक्शन 365 ऑफ द आईपीसी दैट इज फॉर किडनैपिंग वाज ब्रॉट इनटू फोर्स इन एन एफआईआर अगेंस्ट हिम and this minister is known for his uh, kind of uh, politics that he does and secondly thani is a very sensitive district right now to be honest because it is it is the district that cm cm eknath shinde represents and uh, his constituency jitendra awards constituency is far from where the small was and i don't know why he had to go into someone else's constituency and do this he could have easily done it in his constituency where the movie was being screened but not in this way if he has a problem he can go and register an fir no one we you know people still need to understand that this country runs under runs by a constitution and there are sections ipc police everyone is there you have a problem as devendra fadnavis rightly pointed out if you have a problem do it in a democratic way this is not how things have to be handled and mumbai is known for being a peace peace loving yeah. city and i don't think such actions by a politician who was a minister housing minister to be you know, honest he I'll was come back to you on the larger minister. issue of how you know films are being used as a political tool and as you rightly pointed out in maharashtra we have number of examples that we've seen where you know one day it's one particular army which is up in arms and the other day it's somebody else so what about the liberty as far as the filmmaker is concerned but we also have the spokesperson of the bjp asif bamla also now joining us on the broadcast uh, asif uh, how do you see what has happened today now the ncp has hit out very strongly they're saying this is just vendetta politics look what happened with the case of sanjay rod where the questions now being raised as far as the role of the investigating agency so this is a pattern we expected this it's nothing but vendetta politics we are aware about uh, uh, you know the uh, uh, the way uh, jitender award has thrashed uh, the people there at the theater at the cinema 
at the at the at the at the Vartak Nagar, and uh, uh, and uh, I am not able to understand uh, such sort of a hooliganism. I mean, I can understand he has been a former minister. He is someone who has taken uh, oath uh, in 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 the government. And if he had any reservations against the film Harar Mahadev, he could have certainly voiced that. He could have uh, preferred to go and launch an FIR against the film. He could have requested uh, the Film for, uh, Federation to uh, stop the uh, release of that. This is not a. Uh, this is a very undemocratic way. And not only that, you you are yourself as an elected representative under an oath going to the cinema. You're threatening them. You're mm. you're, <coughs> you're 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 pushing them. Uh, is that? Uh, I mean, what? Uh, and and if. And if we, the Bharatiya Janata Party, who is in power today, uh, uh, under uh, Mr. Devendra Fadnavis, who is the Home Minister, he has, well, we have uh, accomplished the videos after properly uh, screening them, after checking uh, uh, the, 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 his behavioural, and today finally it was decided that he, there should be an FIR file. And he has been habitually uh, doing this in the past. He has, he has, he has also beaten up, uh, he has been an offender, mm. he has beaten up the contractors in the past. So I, uh, I hmm. don't understand. So the NCP and, and, and is saying that we won't tolerate we say, anything no, no, which no, compromises let, let, the depiction let, let, let as far as facts with Chhatrapati Shivaji is concerned. I'll just, I'll just, I'll just come today, back to you. Let, I'll me, just let me complete. Okay. Go ahead, go ahead. Quickly. I have 10 seconds. Go ahead, you know, go ahead. If, if today, if we, re, uh, you see, we should allow such lawlessness to happen. Or if we do something against it, then we will work with the change. So we should allow such things to happen. Would this be okay if a normal citizen would have done this? No, but the NCP doesn't feel like they have done something wrong. They are protesting because they are saying that we have done something wrong. We don't think that we have done something wrong. But let me bring in the NCP spokesperson also. Bridgemohan Shrivastava is now joining us. Rishmohan Ji, I want to ask you, you are a leader, you go to a cinema hall, you stop screening, you have a hand with people, you have a hand with people, what is this kind of freedom of expression? If you had a problem with the film, then talk to the filmmaker or talk to the rest of the people. But what kind of way is that you take law and order in your hands? Look, I will tell you this, first of all, when Jitan Awad Ji went there, the film was the distributor of the film, कि जो डिस्ट्रीब्यूटर से उनसे बातचीत करने ये रिक्वेस्ट करने गए थे कि मुझे दर्शकों ने अभी ये जानकारी दी है कि वहाँ पर इस फिल्म में छत्रपति शिवाजी को लेकर कुछ तथ्यात्मक गलत बातें बताई जा रही हैं वो वहाँ उनसे रिक्वेस्ट कर कर रहे थे कि आप इसको रोकिए लेकिन वहाँ पर जो विवाद शुरू हुआ वो विवाद वहाँ पे दर्शकों में हुआ और कुछ जो और लोग गए हुए थे कार्यकर्ता उनके बीच में विवाद हुआ जैसे ही ये विवाद होता है वैसे ही जीतन रवाड़ साहब ने जाकर उनके बीच में बीच बचाव किया आप देखिए वीडियो के अंदर ये बहुत स्पष्ट है कि जिस व्यक्ति जो व्यक्ति है उसने जितेन अवार्ड साहब के पैर छुए और उनसे कहा कि आप मेरे को बचाइए तो वो उन्होंने उनके कंधे पे हाथ रखे वो बाहर निकाला है मैं फिर से एक बात कह सर जो विजुअल्स हैं और आप भी देख सकते हैं हमारे दर्शक भी देख सकते हैं हाथापाई साफ साफ दिख रही है वो दर्शक बिचारा वो दर्शक एक मिनट सर 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 मेरे और आपके शब्द से ज्यादा जो तस्वीरें हम दिखा रहे हैं आई थिंक व्यूअर भी काफी स्मार्ट है आप देखिए जिस तरह के व्यूअर पिक्चर्स हम दिखा रहे हैं जी ने किसी के साथ हाथा पाई नहीं किए मैं फिर आपसे कह रहा हूँ मेरे पास भी वीडियो मैंने देखा है उसको जीतेन तवाड़ जी ने किसी के साथ हाथा पाई नहीं की बल्कि उस व्यक्ति के कंधे पे हाथ रखे उसकी पत्नी के साथ उनको लेकर बाहर तक आए उनको एक सम्मान देते हुए सर उस आदमी के कपड़े खींचे जा रहे हैं जब वो कुछ बोल रहे हो तो उसको उंगली दिखाई दी जा रही है की तुम कुछ ना ही बोलो ये किस तरीके का बिहेवियर है और मैं तो आपसे एक सिंपल सवाल पूछ रही हूँ कि अगर आपको कोई तकलीफ थी कोई दिक्कत थी तो आपको कौन हक देता है या आपके लीडर को कौन हक देता है कि आप एक मूवी हॉल में जाके एक स्क्रीनिंग को रोक दें ये तो मेरा और आपका कोई हक नहीं है मैं मैं बीजेपी वालों से भी यही पूछ रहा हूँ की जब छह जुलाई दो को कलकत्ते के अंदर दुर्गा के जब काली माँ का प्रदर्शन हुआ तो डेढ़ सौ से ज्यादा बीजेपी के कार्यकर्ताओं ने जाके वहाँ पे मारपीट की बच्चे और महिलाओं को सर मैं बीजेपी वालों से बीजेपी वालों के बारे में बात करूंगी पर आप मुझे बताइए कि हमें मुझे और आपको या जो आपके लीडर हैं कि कौन हक देता है कि हमें फिर की स्क्रीनिंग में बीच में जाके उसको रुकवा दे और फिर वहाँ पर जाके हाथापाई करें और उसके बाद कोई अपोलॉजी भी ना है मैं तो सिर्फ ये समझना चाहती हूँ मैं यही तो कह रहा हूँ आज तक बीजेपी नेताओं ने माफी नहीं मांगी मैं आपसे कह रहा हूँ आपको पूछने का अधिकार है लेकिन भारतीय जनता पार्टी को इस मामले में ना रिएक्ट करने का अधिकार है ना कोई प्रश्न पूछने का अधिकार है पहले सबसे पहले काली माँ के लिए जो उन्होंने गलती की उसे देश से माफी मांगे 
पश्चिम बंगाल की मतदाताओं से माफी मांगे हमारे जितेंद्र अरवाड़ साहब की चूंकि अब तो देखिए मामला सब जुडिस है पुलिस ने उनके खिलाफ कार्रवाई शुरू कर दी है पुलिस इन्वेस्टिगेटर इन्वेस्टिगेट कर रही है जो सही होगा वो कोर्ट के सामने आएगा लेकिन मैं एक बात कहना चाहता हूं कि मुंबई की जो महाराष्ट्र में छत्रपति शिवाजी के लिए यदि हमको अपनी जान भी देना पड़े तो हम लोग पीछे नहीं हटेंगे अगर उनको लेकर कोई गलत बात दिखाई जाएगी सर ये तो एक तरह की ओपन धमकी हुई ना कि आप ये तो आप ओपन राइटिंग का एक उदाहरण दे रहे हैं बट लेट मी ब्रिंग इन स्पोक्सपर्सन ऑफ दूसरा चाहता हूँ वो है किसके साथ खोका सरकार से पूछना चाहता हूँ वो है किसके साथ वो छत्रपति जी का अपमान करने वाले लोगों के साथ है सर अगर अपमान हो रहा है तो ये तो मैं कह रही हूँ अगर अपमान हो रहा है तो आपका हक है उस पर बोलने का वो आपका हक है और वो सही करना चाहिए पर किस तरीके से करना चाहिए वो सवाल खड़ा हो रहा है पर लेट मी ब्रिंग इन द बीजेपी स्पोक्स पर्सन ऑल्सो आसिफ आमला इन नो वे इज एनीबडी एंडोर्सिंग द काइंड ऑफ विजुअल्स दैट वी सो यू के नॉट टेक लॉ एंड ऑर्डर इन योर ओन हैंड इफ यू हैव एन ऑब्जेक्शन यू डू हैव अ राइट टू प्रोटेस्ट but just speaking on the facts and the issues that are being raised by the ncp they are saying that look at how facts are being distorted yes we talk about creative and liberty uh, of the filmmaker but you cannot play around as far as the sentiments of the people are concerned they feel that the history <coughs> depicting shivaji maharaj has been distorted there is a particular scene which they have an issue with and more importantly they feel that this film is very far from reality with the kind of depiction it shows in the differentiation of marathas and marathis So shouldn't those see, concerns then be taken into account? There was, uh, can, can I repeat? They 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 claim that there was pressure on the police and the administration. Aren't they aware by such leaders who are big leaders who are known in Maharashtra by their behavior? How much of pressure falls on the administration? And I'm surprised that senior leaders of their party and the other parties are backing such act of hooliganism. Uh, where is the political stature of the country going? I mean, I, 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 I mean, you at least have the audacity to say, and you not only that, you're already creating a ruckus now also at the police station But, at the roads by calling the kare kartas. एक तो आपने एक तो आपने थिएटर में वो सब कर दिया जो करना चाहिए था अरे आपको ये तकलीफ यू शेव रिटर्न टू दी सी बी एफ सी को आप लिखिए ना सेंट्रल बोर्ड ऑफ सर्टिफिकेशन ने उन्होंने जब उन्होंने जब सेंसर बोर्ड का सर्टिफिकेट दिया आप उन्हें लिखिए एंड मैं आपको ये पूछता हूं कि इस ये ये पिछले सरकार में जब उद्धव जी की सरकार थी तब ये टॉलरेटेड था वी हैव अ वेरी वेरी स्ट्रॉन्ग होम मिनिस्टर लाइक अ देवेंद्र फडनवीस जी ही विल सर्टनली नॉट टॉलरेट दिस sort of a disgruntlement in the law and order situation and mind you and in the theater when a leader an elected representative like him had gone there tomorrow if there was an eventuality or if there was any unforeseen event that would have happened what would have been and big leaders are supporting nahi nahi aisa nahi hona chahiye to hame kya karna chahiye wo ja ke wahan par theater mein maar kaat kare dhakka mukti kare aur aur humne ne beech mein boliye beech mein mat boliye aap beech mein na boliye aap apne samay pe baat kariye Don't Don't talk in between. You have some shame. Your okay. leaders okay. don't have shame, and your bloody spokesperson don't have shame. Okay, okay. Bridge Mohan Shivasa, he will get called to. As a bamla, finish your point, and I'll give a chance to Bridge, and then I'll want to go back to Varun also. Put as a bamla, put the spade off. They have they. This is the level of uncivilization. This okay. is how they are brought up. Okay. What I am saying is, up. आप ये सारा जो है एक एक संवैधानिक एक संवैधानिक देखो अच्छा ओके ब्रिज मोहन जी ब्रिज मोहन जी वन सेकंड वन सेकंड आसिफ आसिफ एंड ब्रिज मोहन वन सेकंड वन सेकंड ब्रिज मोहन जी एक मिनट एक मिनट ब्रिज मोहन जी एक सिंपल सवाल पूछा जा रहा है जैसे मैंने आपको पहले भी कहा कि अगर आपको लगता है सेंटिमेंट हर्ट हुए हैं तो आपका पूरा हक होता है की आप प्रोटेस्ट करें बट आप एक जो जो उनकी रिप्रेजेंटेटिव अथॉरिटीज हैं, उनसे बात करें लोगों पर जाके गुस्सा निकालने का कोई तरीका नहीं है दूसरी चीज बीजेपी ये भी पूछ रही है वन सेकेंड आसिफ आमला आई कम बैक टू यू ब्रिज मोहन श्रीवास्तव आपसे एक सवाल बीजेपी ये भी पूछ रहा है कि जब तक आपकी सरकार थी तो सब कुछ ठीक था तब हमने ऐसे केसेस नहीं देखे सरकार पलट गई है तो आप इसको एक पोलिटिकल टूल की तरह से इस्तेमाल कर रहे हैं नहीं मैं उनके सारों से पूरी तरह से प्रदर्शन अभी हुआ है और इस इस पिक्चर इस इस पिक्चर में चूंकि ऐतिहासिक तथ्यों को गलत ढंग से प्रस्तुत किया गया है आज छत्रपति शिवाजी की एक एक सच्चाई है और उनकी जानकारी 
पूरी किताबों में दर्ज है इतिहास गवाह है इस बात का यदि उनके तथ्यों को लेकर कोई बात गलत दिखाई जाती है तो मैं सोचता हूँ उस हर व्यक्ति को आवाज उठाना चाहिए जो छत्रपति शिवाजी में विश्वास रखता है मुझे ऐसा लगता है कि महाराष्ट्र की एक खोखा सरकार और उसके प्रतिनिधि इस मामले में पूरी तौर से संवेदनहीन है ओके वी सीम टू बी लूजिंग दैट कनेक्शन बट वरुण आई वांट टू कम बैक टू यू एंड थैंक यू फॉर पेशेंटली वेटिंग बट यू नो बिटवीन दिस पॉलिटिकल वॉर ऑफ वर्ड्स व्हाट आई एम एसेंशियली ट्राइंग टू अंडरस्टैंड इज वन यू डू हैव अ सेंस ऑफ बोर्ड इफ दैट मूवी हैज बीन cleared it would have been done keeping certain parameters and the sensitivities and sentiments of people in mind secondly this is not the first time that we are seeing something similar in the past also we've seen a lot of groups up in arms threatening to actually bring down theaters or you know the lives of actors and actresses have been at risk as well do you think cinema is now being used as a political tool you know before i answer that question i think i just have one small thing to say as a common man i feel so sad for myself that i go to see a cinema i have paid for the uh, ticket i am watching a cinema and a political party goon along with his leader comes beats me up and there is no one to speak for me over here there are thousands of people again gathered on the streets of thane to protect that same leader whose karyakartas assaulted a common man like me in the theater who just asked a simple question over there that you know who is he or who so ever anyone is there to come and stall a movie for which i have paid secondly answering to your question about political tool cinema has been used as a political tool there are multiple movies that have been released uh, you know sort of propelling the idea or ideologies that a particular narrative has been set using cinema i don't know what is the uh, what is so big a thing when a cinema comes out obviously these are mostly fiction movies and i don't know i haven't seen this movie and i was not even intending to see this movie but now thanks to this particular controversy i also have this uh, you know thought behind but you know varun this is where and i'm just playing the devil's advocate here taking on from what you were saying you know when we speak over the creative freedom or creative liberties of the filmmaker uh the other end of the spectrum is are these liberties then being misused exactly there are multiple uh, cases or multiple examples where this liberty has been misused but and there are so many examples where a movie has to be taken out of cinema hall in midway and earlier also if you see the example of adi purush where there was such an uproar with the trailer the um, the producers the directors have now gone back to the editing table and decided to make those uh, amend those errors that were raised by the people even in this case if 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 mr avar or the ncp today feels that the history has been portrayed in a way which is not correct or which you know they have used a word vikrit over here multiple times most of the ncp leaders have used it over here in maharashtra they could have gone easily to the producer the producer is from mumbai uh, you know it is a marathi movie they could have gone back to the censor board and asked things to be changed in the movie going in the cinema hall obstructing a movie and beating up a common man i feel so shamed okay. that you know a shame over here that a common right. man is attacked in this way for such 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 main aapko aapko final word dungi main aapse sirf ek cheez puchna chahti hu kya aaj ncp maafi mangna chahegi jis tarah ke humne visuals dekhe jis tarah ki hatha pai hui ki ncp abhi bhi apne leader ko support karti hai bridge mohan ji maafi mangna chahiye is khoka sarkar ko jinhone ki adarni jitan award saab ke khilaf इस प्रकार की कार्रवाई की है इस बात को जानते हुए कि उन्होंने 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 छत्रपति शिवाजी के उन्होंने छत्रपति शिवाजी जो इंसान को जो मारा गया उसके लिए माफी उनके तथ्यों को गलत ढंग से जिंदा माफी मांग सकते हैं इसके खिलाफ वो परीक्षण जी मेरे ख्याल से आप समझ नहीं रहे मैंने जैसे आपको बोला की अगर आपको लगता है की सेंटिमेंट हर्ट हुए हैं ठीक है वो आपका हक है पर जो एक कॉमन इंसान है जो व्यूअर है उनका भी हक है कि वो सेफली जाए मूवी देखें और सेफली वे वापस घर आ जाए उनकी क्या गलती थी कि उनको हाथा पाई हो गई उनके साथ और उसके बाद आपकी पॉलिटिकल पार्टी उनको डिफेंड भी करना चाहती है बिल्कुल नहीं वहां पर उस व्यक्ति ने जिनके साथ हाथा पाई हुई है उन्होंने वहां पे जो दर्शक उनके साथ बैठे हुए थे उनके साथ बदतमीजी की है उसके कारण ये झगड़ा हुआ है इसमें ना तो राष्ट्रवादी कांग्रेस पार्टी कार्यकर्ता वीडियो देख लीजिए मैं ये नहीं मैं ये सोचता हूँ जज ना बने अभी अभी महाराष्ट्र पुलिस पर हमको पूरा विश्वास है हमें मुझे मालूम है कि मुंबई पुलिस इस मामले में निष्पक्ष कार्रवाई करेगी उनको इन्वेस्टिगेट कर रहे दीजिए ये भारतीय जनता पार्टी के जो आदरणीय गृह मंत्री उनके इशारे पे जो कार्रवाई 
कार्रवाई हो रही है उसका भी पर्दाफाश उसी तरह से होगा जैसा भी संजय राउत जी के मामले में हाईकोर्ट हाई कोर्ट ने और कोर्ट्स ने इतने खतरनाक ऑर्डर किए सरकारों के इन एजेंसियों की मिसयूज को लेकर वैसी चीज सामने आ जाएगी हमको कोई इस मामले में वो नहीं है लेकिन मैं फिर ये कहना चाहता हूँ कि छत्रपति शिवाजी के खिलाफ अगर कोई एक बात कही जाएगी तो राष्ट्रवादी कांग्रेस पार्टी का हर कार्यकर्ता इसके लिए संघर्ष करेगा और कोई इससे पीछे नहीं हटेगा ये मैं फिर से सरकार को ही बताना चाहता हूं और आम नागरिकों के बीच में हम अपनी इस बात को रखना चाहते हैं आसिफ बामला देर अ लॉट ऑफ क्वेश्चन why these agencies or why the police is making these arrests now the ncp is using the case of sanjay raut who of course has gotten bail of almost after uh, i believe 100 days now they're saying look at that particular case where questions are being raised as far as the ed's own role is concerned so what is the belief in terms of what officials on the ground are doing we know where the orders are coming from well sanjay raut is a different issue and that's a court matter i would not Why like to discuss issue? in this yeah is, is a simple yeah the tell tell him to tell him to tell him to keep shut tell him to keep shut yeah uh, yeah is a different case a simple case of a person being thrashed forcefully he's been the screening is being stopped we've been seeing abusing the physical assaulting has been What seen your worker and you mean as a government uh, uh, as, 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 as a government uh, please shut his voice please tell to the nation what your worker as a government we should just as a government we should just sit quietly we should just sit like a we should sit like a bridge mohan ji ko bolne dijiye bolne dijiye main aapke paas wapas aaungi bridge mohan ji unko bolne dijiye spectator he has no shame he should be firstly he should be arrested also along with people like uh, jitendra wal they they the you mean the government of the day should sit down the, like a silent spectator ye uddhav thakre ki sarkar nahi hai yahan jo bhi dada giri karega ya kanun haath mein lene ko jayega uske sath jo hai ye sarkar deal karegi yahan ka grah mantri grah mantri jo hai swayam prabal grah mantri hai ye ye chakke ye ye sari jo aapki kootnitiyan hain aur uske baad aapko aapne jab isko is cheez ko aap aap certify karte ho aap isko khandan karne ki bajaye iska iska mukhalifat karne ke bajaye aap iski sarana karte ho police station mein aap jaake aapke karyakartaon ke hath se aapne already ek rakas create kiya आपने और कर रहे हो आपने और वहां माहौल और वातावरण खराब कर रहे हो आप क्या जनता महाराष्ट्र की जनता आपको जवाब देगी अगर आपको विरोध था आप सीबीएसई में जा सकते थे आप आप मांग कर सकते थे कि भाई ये सीन्स है हमें इससे आपत्ति है आप इन पर कोई बदलाव लाइए देर इज अ सिस्टम ये क्या अपने मतलब रैंडसम ले रही है तरीका आप, 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 आप एम एन एस की बात करते अन्य पार्टी की आप में क्या फर्क है आप में क्या और मुझे तो मुझे तो दुख ये हो रहा है कि बड़े जो नेता है जो शिक्षित नेता है In a massive development all of the killers of Rajiv Gandhi have now been released the supreme court has ordered the release of six convicts today including S Nalini and RP Ravichandran a bench of justices B B R Gavai and B V Nagaratha said that they are being released prematurely because of their satisfactory conduct remember in May this year Pirari wala now the killer had also been released the congress has reacted strongly calling it a sad day We now have on the broadcast with us M Radhakrishnan he is Nalini's lawyer who is remember one of the convicts who of course has been released today sir we appreciate you taking out the time and joining us here how do you see the developments today of course this has been met with mixed reactions with the likes of DMK ADMK welcoming the move with the congress having extremely strong reactions how do you feel today hello this is uh, purely legal you cannot make it political right so the former rajiv uh, former prime minister was assassinated at that time it was political now all the convicts have been released only under the scheme of premature release of right convicts in tamil nadu so not only these seven people were released there are more than 3000 people were released during the Oh, it's a political issue, right? So this uh, release is you no know, long pending. 
Actually, all these seven people ought to have been released in 2008-2018 when Tamil Nadu cabinet passed the resolution. The governor failed in his duty, constitutional duty, to sign the papers. That's why they have been under illegal detention for the last four years. So, so there is nothing. Okay. We actually Long. seem to be losing that connection uh, with the lawyer of Nalini. But essentially what he is saying is that he feels that this is already justice de uh, delayed because he feels that his client and others should have been released way back in 2018. Sir, we appreciate you taking out the time and joining us uh, here. We leave the conversation there. We're also now being joined in by R.P. Ravi Chandran. He's also one of the main accused as far as Rajiv Gandhi's killing is concerned whose release was also announced today. Uh, thank you so much for taking your time and joining us here on CNN News 18. Uh, how do you feel today? Many would say this has been a long battle. This is something that you waited for. Also, more importantly, how do you see the kind of reactions that are coming in from the Congress party where they call it an extremely sad day? I'm happy and at the same time relieved. It's very hard. Uh, uh, the prison and uh, the system is... Uh, 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 very much needed improvement, uh, but uh, somehow uh, uh, we got through. We also suffered. Uh, did not indulge in any uh, any anything uh, outrageous in this case. Uh, so, but we are uh, framed framed by the uh, CBA and uh, uh, this this system. Uh, the real countries are uh, still out there in the open. Uh, this is politics. This is politics. Uh, we, under, we understand the politics will go on. We all the uh, all the six persons uh, uh, are not involved in conspiracy. We are uh, in uh, we are in jail because uh, we. Uh, the court said we are involved in the conspiracy, but we are not involved in conspiracy. Uh, we did something uh, uh, very few uh, million things, uh, not in uh, conspiracy. Okay. Uh, but the CBA framed the uh, indulgence in conspiracy in this case. Okay. Calling it a conspiracy, sir. We appreciate you joining us here. We leave the conversation there. With that, it's also a wrap from my side. Plain Speak is up next. Good evening, hello and welcome to Plain Speak. I'm Anusha Soni. In a major controversial statement, West Bengal Chief Minister Mamta Banerjee has accused none other than the National Investigation Agency of fueling tensions in the state of West Bengal. The TMC Supremo, while training guns at the BJP, argued that VIP cars are carrying arms and ammunition to fuel tensions in certain parts of West Bengal.